Tell me about the early days. You, you, you're trying to make it with a whole bunch of other Aussies. Nicole Kidman slept on the couch. Yes. Yeah? Well, we're, the house we had was like the Gumleaf Mafia. It was like you were all there, like, you know, giving a go as a stroller, and, like, you'd do five auditions a day. you just drive all over L.A., and then by night we'd party. But we were all doing it together, and it was And who fun. was there? Oh, gosh, Tom Burlington, uh -huh. um, Nicole Kidman, Naomi Watts, uh, just gangs of people, we know how to party. Yeah. Better than the Americans. After several years in LA, Deborah Lee went to see a fortune teller. Embracing her words turned out to be a pivotal moment in Deborah Lee's life. She said, oh, you have to go back to Australia. Everything falls into place um, in Australia and you're going to meet someone and you have to go. And it was at a time I was like, just wanted to get out of LA and she said that and so I did it. And I came back to Australia and just got a whole lot of work. And then I got this TV show called Corelli. And they said, there's this guy, Jack Human, who's your co-star. I'm like, who? And I'd never heard of him. Anyway, I met my husband. Oh, wow. Was it instant attraction? Or... It was instant attraction, as in it was probably the best tennis match I'd ever had. Like, working with Hugh, we would just when you act with someone and it just flows, we just, and we did have an instant connection, like as far as just these two, it was almost, I almost missed it, it was so comfortable. Mm. And all my girlfriends said, oh, he doesn't seem your type, he looks like he bathes. He looks like he bathes. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have shared that. That's, no, that's hilarious. <laughs> Mind you, he did have tattoos and a mullet at the time, that was his character. <laughs> oh, and, and, and Hugh's super tough, I mean, you don't get much tougher than Wolverine. <laughs> Is it true that your advice to Hugh was don't take the role of Wolverine. Oh, God. Do you, know, do you know how much shit I've got for this? Oh, my God. No, well, because we read this script and it was like, his claws come out and he goes, shook, and I'm like, what is this? He's at the National Theatre doing Oklahoma, you know? Yeah. Had cred. So, yeah, when I, and we knew, both of us knew nothing about it. He thought it was the Uncanny X-Men, which was Brian Maddox, an Australian band. He had no clue. Um, so, yes, that's the only time in our relationship I've ever been wrong, OK? <laughs> When did you know that Hugh was the one? He said he knew two weeks in. I remember saying to him, he was cooking a dinner party, and I said in the kitchen, I said, oh, you haven't been coming to my trailer because we always used to hang out lately. He goes, yeah, yeah, I know, I, I haven't. He said, oh, I've got a crush on you. And oh, when he said that, I was like, oh, I've got a crush on you too. And that's like, then we admitted it. And then I don't think we ever spent a day apart. Wow, that's beautiful. We just had this amazing connection. And I feel blessed that I experienced it. I feel like I met my soulmate, whatever that is. And I always knew that I would meet the, the person that Hugh is, who he is and how we relate. I sort of knew that it would be like that. So it was, it was just great from the start. Yeah. Which is, and so, it gets better. And it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's when you find a partner in crime that you share and you grow together and, you know, and life is tough, as we know, it's not all good. And when you have someone there that, is so supportive and you can, you know, really stand buck naked and be your, you have to. Yes. When you've got kids and life and whatever, you stand there buck naked, authentic, warts and all, this is who it is and you're loved. It's nothing better. Nothing better, isn't it? Take me back to your wedding day. I spent a year organising the wedding. Our wedding was best wedding I ever went to. I loved every minute of it. And this is before the days when Hugh was Wolverine. Oh, correct? yeah. Yeah. I had to beg for him to be my date at the Logies, I think. Like, the, who is this guy? I'm like, just, can I bring him? Anyway, so they had every religion was involved in that. And I had grown up in the Jewish community. I'd always, like all my friends were Jewish, I'd been to all the Jewish weddings. And just because I'm not of the faith, I'm not missing out on the fun, because I'm sorry, Jewish community, they have the best weddings. So Hugh and I had a whole section where we did the horror, we were up on the chairs. So all the Christian community's going, what the hell's going on here? Mm. Hugh wanted the bouncy castle. I drew the line at the bouncy <laughs> castle. It was the greatest wedding, loved it. Do you get sick of being told you're lucky to be married to Hugh? Lucky, like I want a chook raffle. <laughs> People don't realise that it's actually rude to say that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the lucky, you know, kind of, because he's the stud muffin and, you know, but that's just showbiz in Hollywood and the brand of Hugh Jackman and... Tell me about the time 
Hugh was named the sexiest man alive. What, what did you tell him that? Take out the trash. <laughs> hey, sexy, your turn for the garbage.